Welcome to Superhero Rundown. I'm Jess, and today we're going to be talking about a man who has no qualms about his code or his gun. That's right, we're talking about Captain Cold, specifically the Arrowverse version of Captain Cold. His arc is interesting in that he goes from a full villain to a full hero in only a season and a half. And the kicker? Wentworth Miller is the perfect casting for Captain Cold in the Arrowverse. And I know that I said that Deathstroke is the perfect villain, but Captain Cold is better than that. He's more. He develops in a way that Deathstroke never could. Importantly, he knows what he's about and he doesn't show weakness if he can help it. And I've never really been excited about Captain Cold. I mean, not even in Injustice 2, so this is gonna be a wild ride. Anyway, let's talk about Captain Cold. When we first meet him, he's robbing a moving vehicle only to be stopped by the Flash. Instead of getting frustrated at the red blur, he gets angry at his crew. He's cold and calculating, not to mention smart. He looks for a way to stop the Flash and finds it by testing the cold gun on the superhero. He's methodical. He does testing and he knows making the Flash save others helps him escape. Plus, he's great at knowing a good bad guy name as well as when to back off. It's the first time for everything, Captain Cold. And he's not above recruiting others to help him. Even if Heatwave is a bit of a hothead. N no, that pun was intended. When he comes back to Central City a few episodes later, he lures the Flash into a fight. Cold reveals to Heatwave that they are stealing a $25 million painting, but is stopped by the innovation of Cisco Shields, which withstand Captain Cold's gun. It's at this point that I realize that Captain Cold is as good at adapting as Cisco is to inventing. He has to convince Heatwave, known as Mick, that they have to leave, though it takes a bit more convincing on Cold's part. But Captain Cold is also somewhat manipulative. He manipulates Mick into taking his choice. Either take the painting and go, or help him with the Flash so Central City belongs to them. Mick chooses the latter and the two kidnap Caitlyn Snow. Cold broadcasts the entirety of Central City that he has Caitlyn and that he wants the Flash. But he does have a bit of humanity as Cold does stop Mick from hurting Caitlyn. Priorities. You know, like putting a bomb under her that will definitely explode if they don't come back. Like I said, priorities? I mean, he's still a villain at this point. I don't know what you want from me. The Flash confronts the duo of Captain Cold and Heatwave with the former's team having figured out they need to cross the latter streams to beat them. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. The Flash makes himself known to Central City because Captain Cold made it impossible not to. Flash gets them to cross streams beating them. They are arrested, but on the way to Iron Heights, Snart's baby sister breaks them out. The next time we run into Captain Cold and Heatwave, who are definitely partners in crime at this point, they are in a business meeting. They get the upper hand on the crime boss of Central City and kill him. Congratulations, fellas! Now what? Cisco, meanwhile, has run into Lisa Snart, Captain Cold's sister. She brings him to Cold and he asks... Hello, Cisco. What exactly are your intentions with my sister? Oh, come on. I should have known better. I am not that lucky. Dude, you should have known. Like, I understand that pretty girls are, like, paying attention to you, and I've had that happen. But, like, eight times out of ten, they turn out to be the villain's relative. Anyway, Cold explains that as a result of his last encounter with the Flash, he needs new guns for him and Mick. He also commissions a gun for Lisa using Cisco's brother Dante as leverage, and as soon as the guns are finished, they go hit up a casino of that crime boss that they totally murdered. When Flash shows up to fight, Captain Cold informs him he has his friend Cisco, and he should let Lisa go unless he wants frozen chunks of his friend. The Flash lets the two escape, and Cold comes back to Mick, beating on Sisko and Dante. He tells Sisko he's a good brother, but when he tortures Dante, Sisko reveals who the Flash is. Okay, yes, he's an absolute asshole, but here's the thing. He's methodical and smart. I mean, he got Lisa back from the Flash by threatening Sisko, one of Flash's friends. Captain Cold knows what he's about. When Leonard Snart... That's still his name... Lisa and Mick chase a truck with casino money. The Flash shows up and brings Cold to a clearing to debate. Captain Cold says the Flash can't stop him, and the Flash definitely can't imprison him. So now what? They reach a compromise. Cold can keep doing his thing as long as he doesn't kill people, and if Cold ever touches the Flash's friends or family again, Cold will go to prison. Unsurprisingly, he agrees to this. That's the thing about villainy. 
Smart villains, they know how to work with the hero to get what they want. I mean, look at Loki placating Thor or any number of the Flash villains that we've seen so far, or hell, even Deathstroke to a degree. I can't think of a good example from DCEU because they're either all dead or beaten and forgettable. Man, fanboy tears are delicious, don't you think? My point is, even if Captain Cold is a villain, he's a smart one. He doesn't allow people to cloud his judgment unless it's Lisa, but we'll get there. Anyway, when Barry needs to transport some villains to the Arrows prison in the South China Sea, he enlists the help of Captain Cold. Leonard walks into the Flash den? Flash cubbyhole. Flash consort- Y'all just need to call your shit the same thing, because this is getting ridiculous. So he walks in and demands that a ship be erased and he ceases to exist and he'll help Barry. Barry does what he asks and Lisa joins in on the fun. But the interesting thing? We need their help if we're gonna pull this off. Why are you wearing your mask? Snart already knows who you are. And I promised I wouldn't tell anyone. That includes my sister. I'm just saying, world-class guy. So Cold, Lisa, and Team Flash start the transport and the prisoners get their powers back and try to fight Flash, but Cold protects him and tells the prisoners to get lost. Then the best exchange of the season happens. My name is Leonard Snart. I know who you are. Always pleased to meet a fan. I want that exchange immortalized on my gravestone until this planet gets sucked into the sun. Cold tells Flash that the villains owe him, and so does The Flash, and leaves with his sister. In season two of The Flash, Lisa shows up at the coffee shop and tells the Flash team that Cold has been kidnapped. Though the team is skeptical, Sisko vouches for her. They track Cold's gun and find out that he's fine, but he's working with his dad. Lisa denies this and shows the scar her father gave her to the team. When Sisko talks to her alone, she reveals that she was abused, but Cold protected her and raised her. She wants to help him. While Snart and Dad Cold are planning a heist, the third guy talks to Cold wrong and Dad explodes him for talking to his son that way. Snart doesn't like it and Flash figures out that Snart is doing the job to protect Lisa because there's a bomb in her head just like that exploded guy. Flash decides to join the heist. That isn't the dumbest idea I've ever heard. So Flash joins up with Snart and Dad and... Nope, this is definitely the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Dad expects the heist to happen now and Flash saves the guards when the key cards don't work and he gets rid of the guards on the floor as Dad tells Cold that Lisa was a disappointment too. Flash gets them in, but Dad shoots him. Yep. This is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Snart follows his dad, thinking Barry is dead, but there's a standoff in the bolt where dad threatens Lisa, Cold is poised to kill the Flash, and Flash is waiting on Sisko and Caitlin to get the bomb out. Sisko succeeds and Cold kills dad because he hates his dad more than he hates the Flash. When Flash asks why... He broke my sister's heart. Only fair I break his. Which brings us to being an anti-hero and the beginning of Legends of Tomorrow. At first, the sole reason that Captain Cold joins the Legends is because he wants to seal things throughout history. He's also sort of fine with the fact that Martin Stein decided to roofie his other half of Firestorm, Jefferson Jackson, to get him on the ship. The first trip out on the Wave Rider and Sarah, Leonard, and Mick go get a drink in the 1970s. Like you do. Sarah dances while Cold holds her drink and then gets super turned on once she starts to fight a guy who asks her to go to the parking lot. Cold and Mick join the fight only after she requests their assistance. And back on the Wave Rider, the three show up in a car and... We go out for one lousy drink and you guys somehow managed to pick a fight with Boba Fett. Also, in case you were wondering, Captain Cold is an absolute feminist. We've already seen him dote on his sister, but he doesn't have problems waiting for Sarah to ask for his help and to tell Rip Hunter that Hawk Girl isn't exactly up for excuses. My son is hurt because of you. Who attacked us? <sighs> Something of a long story. Better tell it fast, Rip, because it doesn't look like the lady's in a patient mood. See, I told you, I knew he was a good guy. After finding out about the fact that the Legends are on a renegade mission, Cold still throws his lot in with them. When there's an arms deal with Vandal Savage, Cold takes the reins. Didn't think so. I'm calling the shot. Actually, I'm in charge in case any of you forgot. No, I remember. I just don't care. They figure out that Savage is the seller of the nuclear warhead and fights the terrorists and the arms dealers. When the cast of Hawk People reveal that the dagger that Savage used to kill them can kill him, Cold volunteers to steal it for the team. He, Mick, and Ray go get the dagger, and Cold shows off his expertise in stealing from douchebags. But Ray makes a mistake, and Mick and Cold punch out the guards. Ray protests as Mick goes to find the safe, but Cold brushes him off. Ray and Cold come to blows and get trapped in a cage. 
Turns out that Vandal Savage is the owner of the house that they're robbing. Oops. But Cold apparently did because he seems unfazed by the development. But I'm immortal. I'm gonna kill you anyway. That's a promise. Cold swipes the dagger when the team comes to rescue the three of them. When Carter ends up dead, Cold is skeptical of Rip Hunter when he says what they should do next for the team. Cold boils it down. They can go back to 2016 and become losers and insignificant, or Ray cuts him off and says they could become legends. Cold agrees because of Carter's death was on his watch as part of Cold's crew. He really does care about the people he works with, even if he has a demeanor that suggests otherwise. Episode 3 of Legends of Tomorrow is a very telling story about Leonard Starr. It's not just that he goes to change the past, but he tries to make a better life for Lisa. Cold and Heatwave find Jefferson in the jump ship. Cold explains he wants to steal a jewel from Central City. Jax doesn't want to help, but Cold tells him he doesn't have much choice and doesn't have to help them actually steal anything. Cold makes it to Central City to steal the Maximilian Emerald and succeeds, where his dad failed. When he goes back to the ship, Mick concludes that he stole it to give it to his father. Cold cuts him off, but Jax protests he could be screwing with history. Cold explains that history screwed with him first. Captain Cold makes it to his childhood home to deliver the emerald and runs into himself. Cold asks Leo to never let anyone hurt him in his mind and his heart, to look after himself. Cold dismisses Leo and turns to his dad. He gives him the emerald and tells him that he gets a pass because Lisa has yet to be born, but that he'll know if he raises a hand to his wife and son, so don't do it, and leaves. His hope is that if dad doesn't go to prison, he won't be abusive. And here we see that Leonard is trying to make his life better. Maybe he won't go out on jobs. Maybe he'll have a better life. After rescuing Rip and Sarah, who had been dealing with trying to get Carter's body back, Cold learns that his dad is arrested for selling the emerald to an undercover cop and that the timeline remains unchanged. Jax tries to persuade Cold that he tried to save him and that it should count, but Cold doesn't seem to be convinced. They say bye to Carter with a proper burial. Cold tells Hunter if he doesn't ditch the team, they won't ditch him. The team then needs to break into the Pentagon with Cold and Ray posing as janitors. Cold swipes the key card and wallet from a woman. It's a nifty little trick. Really? You're trying to save the world and you're lifting wallets? It's called multitasking. Look, I said he was a feminist, but he's still a thief and a liar. Doesn't mean he's not a feminist. Eventually, Cold and Ray argue over a woman scientist. Cold wants to kill her because she's working with Savage, but Ray says they don't know her effect on history. Ray strikes out with her after taking some language pills, but Cold engages her and succeeds in having walked her home. She gives Cold a kiss on the cheek, and Cold reveals to Ray that he swiped her security badge and her wallet. Thief and a liar. Still a feminist. Cold and Ray get into another argument over Valentina, the woman. Leonard doesn't want to jeopardize the mission, but Ray wants to save her. Valentina turns on Cold and Martin gets captured with Mick and Ray. Cold does manage to grab the thermal core, gives it to Rip, then threatens him for making him leave part of the team behind. Cold and the rest of the team are learning about the captured team's whereabouts, but Cold doesn't have time for the Wikipedia version of things and wants to know how to get in to rescue them. Cold says there's never been a place he couldn't break into, but Sarah breaks up the argument before it can go further. Sarah convinced them to ask the Russian mob. Cold and Rip go to a Russian mob guy while Sarah takes out his guys. The guy fights Rip, but Sarah interrupts and gets the guy to talk. The guy tells them that his black market stuff goes to the gulag. Cold and Sarah are preparing to go to the gulag, and Cold remarks he'll rescue Raymond so he can. Well, I'm going to save Raymond, all right, so I can beat some sense into him. Cold knows that Sarah is supposed to kill Martin, but isn't so keen on leaving people from the team behind or icing them. Sarah interjects she's saving the future by any means necessary. Lake of Assassins training is a bitch snart. Sarah and Cold arrive in the Gulag. Cold tells Sarah to kill Stein while she's looking into his eyes. Captain Cold brings Sarah's corpse through the Gulag. Sarah and Cold split up with Cold going after Mick and Ray while Sarah goes to get Martin. Cold goes to rescue Mick and Ray. When Ray doesn't wait, Cold resolves to leave him behind, but Mick is skeptical. Mick takes Ray while Cold protests. Cold and Mick find out the power is cut and the inmates can be released, and they're dressed as guards. Uh-oh, spaghettios. Cold tells Mick to go to the loading bay, but he's going to do something else. Cold convinces Sarah not to kill Stein because she's not a killer anymore. They escape as Valentina has a nuclear explosion that takes out the gulag. Back on the Wave Rider, Cold has a bit of wisdom of his own. Courtesy of Yui the Bear. How did you even have time to steal this? There's always time to steal. 
Thief and a liar. I mean, I guess it's hard for some people to understand that you can be a thief and still be a good guy, but like, Leonard's been sticking to his code since we first met him in The Flash. They run into some thugs and they throw down. Heatwave decks the guy with his flame gun and the thugs get a bit spooked. Heatwave is having the time of his life, but Cole doesn't want to put roots down in 2046. After Deathstroke's son barges in and demands Sarah and Rip's heads, Mick doesn't really care, but Cole points out that they're friends and Heatwave did rescue Ray in Russia. Mick, it's time to go. You're the boss of me. Actually, I am. Cold takes a breath and tells Mick they can rescue Rip and Sarah, then have their top conversation. After they help, Mick and Cold have their top conversation. Mick wants to save and run the city because it's full of criminals and thieves, but Cold says fuck that and knocks him out, proving he's obviously the top. Sarah and Rip come back and Rip asks what happens, but Cold kind of shrugs it off. They head back to the ship so repairs can be finished, bringing the unconscious Mick with them. And despite his volatile relationship with Mick, he does actually still care about him. Cold confronts Mick after the latter is no longer unconscious, and Mick deduces that Cold wants to be a team player more than being his partner. But Cold answers that he's doing it to get rid of Savage. He says that they would be the two baddest sons of bitches of all time, and that's why he's doing it. Mick says he wants to see the world burn. Okay, Joker, slow your roll. Cold thinks Mick needs to calm his ass down. The ship gets a distress call that turns out to be time pirates. Sarah remarks that Mick is still upset about not being able to stay in 2046, but Cold responds that he'll probably get over it. Sarah, however, isn't so sure. In the midst of the time pirate debacle, Cold is pissed off because Mick is still on the time pirate ship. And yeah, maybe Mick is a hothead, but Cold does care about him more than most people on the ship. You know, unless he's flirting slash eye-fucking with Sarah Lance. What? He was. Sarah and Cold go to fix the ship's hull, but they end up getting trapped in the lock. While trapped, Cold asks how it is to die and asks how she felt. She says lonely, mostly. He shares that the last time he almost died was the day he met Mick in Juvie at 14. Some kids jumped him since he was pretty small, but Mick stepped in to help him. Mick has been standing up for Cold ever since. And in doing so, reveals why he cares about Mick the most. Cold reveals he has regrets. He says he should have left him in Star City in 2046 because without Cold, Mick doesn't get checked and he becomes more scary than usual. Sarah tells him that Mick's not coming back, he's in too dark a place. Mick betrays the team to the pirates, but offers Cold an out. Cold chooses to help the team. While the team figures out what to do, Cold is absolutely against sending Mick back to 2016 because his sister and the team's other relatives still live in that period. Cold is adamant about handling Mick and brings him to an unknown time and location. Cold reveals that he's a liability to the team because people change. Cold kills him, but we don't actually see the body. In a comic book, a comic book movie, or a comic book television show, if you don't see the body, he ain't dead. We saw Carter's body, so he's dead. We did not see Mick's body, so Mick ain't dead. After Mick is dead, the team is weary of Captain Cold, but he proves himself to be part of the team to the point where Jefferson, known as Jax among the team, apologizes to Cold and says Cold is definitely still part of the team. Kronos appears and takes Captain Cold, and it's revealed that it's Mick. Whoops. Mick explains that Cold should have killed him after Mick sold them out to the Time Pirates. It's revealed that he didn't kill Mick, he almost went insane and fed on rats until the Time Masters came to retrieve him from the forest. Mick reveals that the Time Masters didn't make him hunt down the team, he's doing it on his own. Mick also tells Cold he isn't going to kill him. Instead, he's going to find Lisa and kill her in front of him, then go back in time and do it again. He'll keep doing it to Cold because it's the only real thing that Cold cares about. Because vengeance, though that's not a great plan. I mean. Cold is gonna become the hero of the season at some point. Cold explains to Mick that his next move is most important because they both make choices that led them to the moment that they're currently in. Cold is left on the ship and tries to escape and manages to get his cold gun out but sacrifices a hand so he can get off his shackles. Cold arrives just in time to show everyone that Kronos is Mick. Back on the ship, Cold is confronted by the team. He tells them that he never actually said he killed Mick, but Rip sees it as an opportunity to reform the prisoner. But Cold thinks he's a lost cause. Cold goes to the med bay to get his hand regenerated. Good as new. So there's a bunch of crap in the next few episodes, but basically it breaks down like this. 
Cold is on team, let's murder this kid because the kid's gonna become an evil dictator and be betrayed and killed by Vandal Savage, yada, yada, yada. And at some point they meet up with Jonah Hex in the Old West because, you know, you gotta at that point. Cold and Sarah talk about Mick. Cold doesn't wanna see him and says he's the same man from when the team wanted Cold to murder him that they had their conversation already. Sarah tells him to stop being an ass and go deal with his issues with Mick. So Cold goes to meet with Mick. He proposes that he opens the cell and they beat the shit out of each other. Mick wipes the floor with Cold but can't kill him. Mick tells the team about the hunters. They work for the Time Masters and have no humanity in them. They will hunt every single member of the team down and wipe them from the timeline. So that's fun. Side note, in the Old West, black depicted bad guys and white depicted good guys. Blue was introduced at some point and it denotes a good guy. And guess which guy was in all black with a blue handkerchief? Yup, our Captain Cold. Anyway, to stop the Pilgrim Lady, the team sets out to save their younger selves. Cold is a bit skeptical of Hunter as the latter has not revealed his secrets and he's still on about it. And when Rip suggests kidnapping the team as newborns, Cold says it's morally questionable. The Pilgrim, after the team rescues their younger selves, makes contact with the team, threatening the team's loved ones. The team goes after her to get their loved ones back and succeeds in killing her. Cold wants to get a move on while everyone else deals with the fallout. Meanwhile, in 2166, the team runs into Vandal Savage's daughter. Cold spends most of his time trying to convince her that her father is a bad guy. Look, it took me a long time to accept my old man was a monster. I'm betting you're smarter than I. He shows her the footage about Savage being a killer. She denies it, but he tells her that he isn't lying about this. Eventually, Cassandra decides to work with them and Cold takes her to the Resistance, vouching for her. And then it's revealed that Vandal Savage has been working with the Time Council the whole time because aliens and the future. Comics are weird, okay? The team is captured with the exception of Cold and Sarah because he cased the ship when they first got there. She refuses to leave with the ship and go back to 2016 without the team. Cold doesn't like it, saying, Aw, you do have a sentimental side. It's not a keepsake. It's a reminder. Of what? That even the best laid plans can go sideways. Anyway, Cold finds the team and frees them because Cronus, our Mick, kills the Time Master that tried to turn him back into Cronus. Good man. For those of you who don't know, that's from Megaforce. If you haven't seen it, go fucking see it, because it's so good. It's really good. Ba ba okay, picture this. Barry Bostwick in Gold LeMay in the 80s. Stop watching this video and go watch that. The team decides to destroy the Oculus, the device that has been manipulating their every move, and even if Cold thinks it's madness, he likes it and is obviously fine with it. Cold goes to see Sarah and apologizes for pulling his gun on her. Apparently, everything we're gonna do has already been predetermined by Rip's former bosses. It's funny, I've always prided myself on being the guy who doesn't play by the rules. Come to find out, I'm the one being played. Cold flirts with Sarah some more and says he's been wondering what the future has for the two of them, but she brushes him off and leaves. The team lands to go take out the Oculus Wellspring, but are stopped by the Time Masters. Before they're executed, Jefferson comes back from 2016 to help them. The team goes to the Oculus Wellspring to take it out. Cold, Sarah, and Firestorm go to guard the entrances while Rory, Rip, and Palmer work on the Oculus. Hunter tells Cold about the failsafe, so Cold goes into the wellspring to get Mick. Cold takes him out and holds the failsafe, and Sarah kisses Cold goodbye. The team leaves as the vanishing point is taken out along with Captain Cold. The team calls him a hero, and Rip discovers that the Oculus wellspring was their map to the time stream. Like I said, a hero by the end of the season who saves his friend. Now don't get me wrong, he's ruthless, intelligent, and patient, but he's also composed, level-headed, and calm. He knows what he's about. And though you can argue that his personality only slightly changed from Flash to the Legends, his motivations definitely did. He's quick on his feet and good at improvising when people are in danger. It's why he goes back for the team countless times. He has a very sarcastic sense of humor and is very good at deadpan delivery. He is a man of his word, as we've seen him with letting Sisko and Dante go. Funnily enough, after Snart's death, Barry says that Snart became the hero Barry knew he could be. Snart was loyal to a fault to his team, especially after Carter's death. 
He even refused to murder Mick, even though it complicated things when Mick confronted them as Kronos. Leonard absolutely detested the idea of being controlled or manipulated. This trait was so inherent in his personality that he literally sacrificed himself to make sure no one else would be manipulated by the Time Masters. Though his team obviously also had something to do with it, even with Sarah kissing him and confirming they were eye-fucking the whole time. Have you seen the two of them? Quite the lookers, them two. So he did a weird thing and asked Reddit. Yeah, that Reddit. I made a post asking the collective thoughts of the Legends of Tomorrow subreddit on Captain Cold, so I apologize if I bought your name. Kalanis said, the power vacuum he left only brought vastly inferior replacements to the rogues, so while it helped Legends, it significantly damaged the Flash. I haven't seen past the end of season two for Flash or season two of Legends, so I can't really speak to that. LeBlacky27 remarks that the Leonard Snart that is first introduced in The Flash is a borderline psychopath. Yeah, that tracks. But they go on to say when Rip Hunter invites Snart and Rory to join him, they join clearly for their own self-interest, but are exposed to something greater than themselves. Not Rip's mission alone, but the motivations and actions of other individuals. That's probably the best catalyst I can say was responsible for Captain Cold's transformation, because although he has a strict code, he definitely was affected by other people on the team that changed his motivations leading to his sacrifice. Rose the Nose 2 adds, he always had a conscience and it was only because of the environment he was in and other people's assumptions that he was a villain. Once he joined the Legends, he was able to express himself and show his heroism. Agreed. Phoenix Typhoon even remarked that Snart is one of his favorite characters in the Arrowverse, and I agree with that sentiment. Captain Cold is my aesthetic. Hexer07 remarked that he wasn't entirely a villain in The Flash, as he did actually stop hurting The Flash at some point. He goes on to say that Snart has more screen time and moments in Legends of Tomorrow that people would laugh at, cry at, and even be surprised of what he can do and how he achieved being a hero, which is not what many villains can do. All in all, Captain Cold is a study in how you go from a cold, calculating villain to a calculating team player who sacrifices himself to save the universe, the time stream, and most importantly, his friends. Honestly, in all of Legends of Tomorrow season one, He's the best of them, hands down. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can actually like figure out. Oh yeah, shit, fun. <laughs> this is gonna be in the behind the scenes for patrons. This is this is how we film today, I guess. Okay, scratch that. I I I lied. That's not how we're gonna film. Look, honestly, all of Reddit isn't that bad. It's just 